Hey guys, today I am going to show you how to fix a broken corner of furniture. So usually this happens like on your table tops, your dresser tops. This is actually a piece of a desk that we once took apart and used the bottom as nightstands. So this corner is pretty damaged. How in the world are we going to fix it? I'll show you how. My favorite way to fix stuff like this is to use Bondo Body Filler. It's auto body uh, filler for their repairs, but it works great on wood. So it comes in a can, it comes in a smaller can, and then it comes with a little tube of hardener. This hardener is pink, and I really like that it's pink, mostly because you can tell if you've put the right amount of hardener in it, because the Bondo will start to look like this pink Bondo color. Um, this is a Bondo spreader. So you're looking for a color that is pretty similar to this color of this uh, scraper, spreader, whatever you want to call it. That's why I love the pink hardener and the auto body kind. You can use um, you can use all purpose bondo or the wood filler bondo, but their bondo is not red, obviously. Um, and so you just need to be aware that you're mixing the right amount of this with the right amount of the base. And you don't have to be like exactly precise, but you do need to make sure you have enough hardener in the base or the base will not harden up. Trust me, I've had a bad experience with that before. So, we're gonna mix up some Bondo and I'm gonna show you how to fix the corner with the Bondo. All right, the first step in fixing this is basically to make a mold out of hot glue. Now, you're gonna wanna look on your piece of furniture and see if you can find a similar corner. Usually, every single piece of furniture has an identical corner. Or like if you're working on a leg, um, usually furniture is going to have two of everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a replica or a mold of this, and then I'm going to use it over here. First, grab a little bit of Vaseline or cooking spray, anything that will basically resist the hot glue. Spread it all over, make sure you get it where the damage is on the other piece. This will just make it so then the hot glue, once it is dry, that it will easily come off of the wood. Otherwise, you'll be ruining and damaging this part too, trying to get the hot glue gun or hot glue off. Now you can just grab your hot glue and cover that area with a thick layer of hot glue. You can see that the top is already starting to dry, but now we just need to let it all dry. You can see that it's dry now. It's not as clear as it once was before. So I'm just gonna take it off now. You wanna be very careful with it. Pull it up a little bit at a time. So it pulled off a little bit of the finish um, and it did, it changed the finish a little bit on here as well. So I would advise you to not do this if you aren't planning on refinishing the wood. We paint a lot of furniture here and honestly when there's damage like this, we're only just going to paint it. We're not going to try to refinish it with a nice stain on it. And so it doesn't matter as much if the old finish gets a little bit ruined. But at least none of the wood fibers came up on here. It's just 
the lacquer that pulled up. So you can set this aside now. And you'll notice that you can set it over your damaged piece and it fits perfectly. That's why I made sure to come back here a little bit more and up here past where I knew this breakage was. All right, the next step is to basically take everything outside. Bondo is really, really stinky and toxic. So you do not wanna use Bondo in a closed area. Um, I mean, I guess you could if you had a mask, but it's also flammable. So it's just best to use it outside. I am going to get more Vaseline and rub it all over on the inside of this mold. So when I put the mold over the Bondo, the Bondo won't stick to this once it's set up. It's time to mix up the Bondo. So first you just wanna knead the hardener container to make sure it's all mixed up. I also like to mix my Bondo up on a piece of cardboard like this. Um, a scrap piece of wood also works great too. Then I scoop a blob of the Bondo base onto the cardboard and add a little bit of hardener to it. Honestly, I never really measure how much hardener to use with the base, but when it's all mixed up, I like it to be just a little bit darker than the color of the Bondo spreader. Make sure to mix the Bondo up really, really well so you can't see any more gray. And then work really fast because the Bondo starts to harden within a few minutes of mixing it up. Now comes the really fun part. You put a little bit of a glob of the Bondo and put it all over the damaged area. And I like to try to kind of push it into the damage to make sure that it has really good adhesion with the damaged wood. If it doesn't have good adhesion, then the Bondo will just fall off. So you wanna have an excessive amount of Bondo in your repair area, because then you're gonna put the hot glue mold over all of that Bondo and it's gonna squeeze out and make a big mess but you want to push the hot glue mold up against like the existing wood. So then you have a nice area that is repaired. It's almost seamless. Once you get it all lined up, just hold the hot glue mold in that position for a couple of minutes until the Bondo really starts hardening. Um, you really don't have to hold it for very long because you'll notice that the Bondo starts hardening up pretty fast. Once it has started to harden up, you can remove it, remove the hot glue mold. Then your Bondo will just start to cure. It takes about 30 minutes for it to really harden. But before you let it harden all the way, I have a little trick. So grab your little utility knife, your straight edge, something that has a sharp blade on it, and remove the big old clumps of Bondo. Um, you don't want to get too close to the edge of your repair or the edge of the damage because you don't want to remove too much Bondo. You just want to remove the like main excess Bondo so then you don't end up having to sand it down. You want to scrape it all off before it really hardens because when it hardens really hard, you're not going to be able to just cut through it with the utility knife. At that point, you'll have to sand it down. Then you just let the Bondo dry completely. It takes about a half an hour, um, maybe a little bit longer in cooler conditions or if you didn't mix enough um, hardener in it, it will take a little bit longer. So if you have a flat surface, you can grab your power sander and sand the Bondo down so it's flush against the old wood. Um, if you don't have a flat surface, do not get the power sander out because the power sander will remove way too much Bondo way too fast. So for the details, what I like to do is I like to grab an 80 grit piece of sandpaper, fold it in half, and use the existing details on the furniture and sand along that and like use it as a guide to um, even out and level the details. 
So after everything is nicely sanded with the 80 grit sandpaper, then I just go back with the 220 grit sandpaper and make it really nice and smooth and get rid of any of like the sanding scratches and marks. I ended up with this little air pocket in the Bondo, which is super annoying, but I ended up just going back over it since it was such a small little hole. I just went back over it with some regular wood filler, let that dry and then sand it down smooth again. So I gave this board two coats of paint just so then you can see what it looks like all painted. And honestly, there are still a few imperfections, but I personally like having a little bit of imperfections. Um, if you want it to be exactly perfect, you can spend more time on it. Um, but working with old furniture, every single piece of furniture has character. And I like to keep a little bit of that character there. I hope that this little video helped you. Please subscribe for more tips and tricks all about furniture.